this Bill Barr holdover named John Durham has been working away, but with very few results. And I'm talking about this. I have it right here, actually, because we're going to get to this tonight. He just released this lengthy final report. It runs about 300 pages, and it's a dud. It does not uncover much of what Barr, who appointed this prosecutor, and Trump, who Barr was trying to appease, what they had hoped. Here's how the New York Times succinctly put it, and this dropped just here in the last couple of hours. So this is a brand new account from the Times, which explains this report from Burham's, I should say, from Bill Barr's pick, Mr. Durham. Quote, the 360-page report appeared to show little substantial new information, failed to produce the kind of blockbuster revelations, impugning the bureau, that's the FBI, which Trump and allies had suggested this prosecutor, Durham, would find. So there it is. Little new information, failed to produce blockbusters, as The Times puts it. And all of this comes after Durham lost not one, but both of the two cases he brought to trial in this probe. So this is one of those times where we have this tonight. We didn't have it until tonight. We just got it. And although the world's changed, a lot of other things are going on. Now that we have this news, we can compare it. You can compare it with your own eyes and ears and what The Times says to stack against those many, many overheated, emotional, and ultimately untrue MAGA predictions. I do think the big report to wait for is going to be the Durham report. The crime was committed on the other side, and we'll find out about that. We have a great attorney general who's looking at it. The Durham team has been working very aggressively to move forward. We may finally, finally be close to learning just how far the Clintons and their allies went in all their efforts to destroy Donald Trump, his campaign, and his presidency. Finally, finally, you take someone who has particularly that brief, that assignment, you give them the awesome powers of not only the DOJ to subpoena, to detain, to get materials on people, to arrest, to indict, to take people to trial. You take all those powers, you run this for several years, and the installation of a special counsel, a term we've all become quite accustomed to because there's been so many. And at the end, here we are today, and this is what you have, a dud. I also mentioned the record because that matters tonight. This prosecutor had one plea bargain and then promptly lost both cases that he brought, 0-2 in court. That is worse than most similar DOJ U.S. attorney's offices and way worse than Mueller. We could be hours away from the verdict in the trial of Michael Sussman. An acquittal could raise doubts about the legal merits of Durham's entire investigation. It was predispositioned uh, to have uh, a not guilty verdict, and here we are once again, another black eye for the justice system. It really had enormous ramifications, and there's more to come. There were major red flags with the jury pool from the very start. Spending millions of taxpayer dollars on an investigation into these false claims, all to score political points, and there's just no accountability, no one being held accountable for this. Well, they went down the road to test accountability. I've told you sometimes on this broadcast about parts of the justice system that don't work well, and then other parts that still work. And the jury system, when it is accurately done, when you have a fair jury and a fair trial, you can find that people come together, they sit down, if the evidence isn't there, our jury system can work. And that's what happened each time. Even relatively minor cases were brought out of the Trump bar special counsel, they lost. They failed when tested in court, despite all of the resources I mentioned. That's what put today's report in this context. And say, indeed, you might say, well, Ari, if the report didn't find anything, why is it the top story? Well, it is the top story that it didn't find anything after all these years, that this prosecutor could not prove these conclusions, as our system requires. Now, this prosecutor can legitimately write a report. We all remember the Mueller report. This is their version of that. In this case, that's fine. But it is another sign of weakness that today the new report is used to basically lodge legal arguments that Durham failed to prove at trial. For example, the report makes this statement out tonight. Quote, the DOJ, the Justice Department, and the FBI failed to uphold the law. Now, think about that for a minute. If you forget the fancy letterhead that it's on and all of the pageantry, it is an assertion about breaking the law. But they only brought two cases and they lost both of them, and those were cases accusing people of breaking the law. 
So what Durham couldn't prove in court, he's now writing in this lengthy op-ed. Contrast that, for example, to Mueller, who did have a report that eventually came out. But also, when he said people broke the law, he took them to court and he won. Manafort, Stone, Flynn, he got the plea deal on, Papadopoulos. The list goes on. This new report also lobs a kind of inner office criticism. I got uh, James Carville standing by. I can't wait to hear what he has to say about this. But after all this time, the report concludes that FBI personnel displayed a lack of analytical rigor towards the information they received. Now, let me tell you what that is. That's years later, after all this talk about deep state and crime, someone saying they don't think the person down the hall, because they're talking about other people within the federal government, had the right analytical, mental, intellectual approach. And that's fine. Let me tell you something. I worked very briefly in the, in the federal government, but it is a place with people doing the, their jobs. So if you've ever been to any job and you look down the hall and you disagree with somebody's approach or ideas, you, you might not say, I disagree with Jim's analytical rigor, but you might say something along the lines of you didn't like the way they did their job. And that's fine. That's quite common. It ain't a crime and they didn't prove one. We also checked, again, we're not reading the whole report to you tonight, but before I bring in our guests, we looked here at which words came up the most in the report. The word bias comes up 43 times, dossier 73 times, probable cause 53 times. And that just tells you how much this report today, four years in the making, is obsessed with certain terms that are designed to impugn or attack the way these investigations ran without ever actually delivering the goods to show that anything resulted in the wrong criminal trials. It didn't prove anything against any of Mueller's actual convictions or unearth anything that suggested anybody was out to actually fake or conspire or frame anyone. And by the way, and if you watch this program, I know you know this is true. If you bring me evidence that the DOJ tried to frame a politician or someone to impact a democracy, that's a big story. We're going to cover it. And I really don't care what party they're from. That's just a big story, period. But four years in, they failed to do not only that, but to even come out with any convictions at trial. 